is as you know color day for in week six for the week seven we're just going to be color day processes of family milling and uh, uh, drilling so uh, and before we get to start with this tutorial i would like to show you something important which is going to be that uh, the assignment number three is already available for you you can find the assignment within the by clicking to the assignment session so assignments and it's going to take you to here so the assignment number three is now available for you uh, what we're going to have in this assignment is going to be seven questions we're going to start with the known operation that's something we're going to do in today's tutorial the turning cutting temperature tool life forging extrusion and the rolling so basically uh, we covered the tool life and we covered the cutting temperature you remember that we uh, used the cook equations to uh, do the cutting temperature calculation from last week and also about the tool life we got the equation which is Taylor equation that uh, was actually going to be that the uh, velocity 1 multiplied by the tool life 1 up to power n is equal to the velocity 2 multiplied by the tool life 2 up to power n which is going to be equal to a constant so we're going to come back to this question after we're going to cover the tutorial and try to give you some hints so you can work, start working on your tutorial uh, anytime soon so uh, Let's check what we have in this tutorial. It's going to be about the cutting conditions in the machining operations. So, if you remember, if you had a look for the uh, the lectures, the lecture tutorial we had, sorry, the lecture recording we had uh, uploaded to you uh, yesterday, you will find that we are going to we continue talking about the three main operations of the uh, cutting operations in three processes and we also talk about the different types of the cutting materials and uh, their properties cutting tools materials and their properties uh, what we're going to have today is going to be about the process of the turning the milling and the rolling operation calculation which at least two of them is going to be part of the assignment number two uh, assignment number three sorry and the final exam questions so let's have a look for the uh, example number one which is going to be on the turning operation now in this example it says that uh, we have the end of large tubular work part and when I say tubular work part that means it's going to be a hollow from the middle it's tube shape okay is to be faced on using the numerical control vertical boring mill machine the part has an outside diameter of 960 millimeters, while the inside one is going to be 600 millimeters. Okay, so this will be the outside diameter, and this will be the inside diameter as a tabular shape. Uh, if the facing operation is going to be performed at rotational speed of 40 revolution per minute, that's the V. The feed rate of 0.4 millimeter per revolution. That's the rotational feed rate. And the depth of the cut of 4.5 millimeters. That's the D depth. Bear in mind, first the cutting time to complete the phasing operation. Time of the machining. And the cutting speed and the metal removing rate at the beginning and the end of the cut now just remember that this part is rotating we have outside diameter and inside diameter so basically if this will be the center we're going to have two arms of forces the inside one and the outside one or we can say that this will be the R at the outside and this one is going to be the radius at the inside now it's known that the longer arm of the force will going to increase the torque and thus we're going to have different speeds 
uh, at the inside and the outside because this will depend on the diameter. Conic speed, of course, is going to be the and the RPM value. Which is going to be a function of the diameter of the part. And we're going to learn how to we're going to use these calculations. So here we need the TM and then we're going to need to find the and at the inside, the RPM at the inside, and the RPM at the outside cutting. So part will look like that. Okay, uh, we have the cutting tool, the part is rotating. The cutting tool is going to be fed in this direction. This is the axis. And this is the x axis. Okay, so as the cutting tool is going to be moved, cutting a certain depth of cut, a certain feed rate, we are going to have the removing all the material and having a new face. Now just remember that this operation is turning operation. So we start with the calculation. First, we need to find the length of the travel in the radial direction. Length of the travel, the travel in the radial direction. If we to go back, what we need to find is going to be the distance from here to here. Because this will be the distance that the cutting tool pass to cover the whole thing. So obviously you can see that this L is going to be equal to the outside radius minus the inside radius. <sighs> this will be the first thing we're going to calculate. So what we're going to have for the L is going to be the outside radius minus the inside radius or the outside diameter minus the inside diameter divided by 2. Same thing by the way. So we're going to have that the L is equal to 180 millimeters. Now why we need the L value? Because you remember the time of the machining, it will depend on the value of the length. Okay, so to find the time, we need to put the millimeter uh, uh, as length divided by the millimeter per minute, which is the linear velocity or the feed rate. And we're going to get the time in minute. So now we found the L value, which is going to be at the top, and we need to find the uh, the linear, velo uh, linear feed rate, the FR value, which is going to be at the bottom. Okay, so this will be the FR, and this will be the L value. That's what we're going to have in this equation. So we start first finding the linear uh, feed rate, which is going to be equal to the rotational feed rate multiplied by the RPM value. So uh, we've been given here, okay, that the RPM value is given as 40 revolution per minute. Sorry, this is the N. I'm sorry for that. This is the N. And here we need to find the Vs. Uh, okay, so uh, we have the end value and we have the rotational feed rate, and I can find the uh, linear feed rate. Let's simply multiply the uh, linear feed rate, the uh, rotational feed rate, by the RPM value, and we are going to get the linear feed rate. Now, just remember that here we have a revolution, okay, over a minute. multiply by the millimeter per revolution and thus we are going to have millimeter per minute which is going to be linear feed rate. So now here for this equation I have above here 180 and below here I have 16 and this will give me the time required for the machine the process. So the next step is finding the time of the machining which is going to be the L divided by the FR and this will be 116, 180 divided by 16 and this will give me the time to be 11.25. Uh, okay, 
1.25 minutes is the time required to clean the drinks. Now we are going to uh, do the calculation to find the cutting speed for this operation or the RPM value for this operation because actually both equations is going to have a relationship between each other. So at the beginning, the speed equation is the pi multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the m. The pi is radian. The d in millimeters. The n is revolution per minute. So what we are going to have is we are going to multiply the radian by the RPM. We are going to get rid of that. Okay, and we are going to have the millimeter per minute is going to be the unit. So the point is 3.14. The DO is given as 600, uh, 960 millimeters. And the N is 40 revolution per minute. So we are going to get the answer to be in, well, because they changed that to meters, it's going to be 0.96 multiplied by 40 multiplied by the pi. And this will be 120.6 meter per minute. Now we can repeat the same process, but change the diameter to be the internal diameter of 0.6. And we're going to have the value which expected to be different from this one because the diameter value is going to be less and thus the velocity is going to be less in that case. Okay, so that will be the answers for this simple question. Now the rate of the material removal at the beginning is going to be equal to the speed of the cutting at the beginning multiplied by the feed rate, multiplied by the depth of the cut. Now, this feed rate is going to be the rotational feed rate. Now, the same thing for the end, we're going to use a different velocity, which is going to be the velocity at the, end, at, at the inside. So we're going to multiply that. The uh, linear feed rate is 16 millimeter per minute, and that's what we used here. Multiply by the depth of the cut, which is 4.5 millimeters multiply by the speed of the cut which is 120 meter per minute multiply that by 1000 to change it into millimeter per minute so we're going to have millimeter per minute multiply by uh, sorry that's that's millimeter per minute uh, yeah, millimeter per minute multiplied by uh, millimeter per minute and multiplied by millimeter and we're going to end up with cubic millimeter per minute as the value for the rate of the material removal. We do it at the end which is going to be at the inside diameter the new speed multiplied by the same feed rate multiplied by the depth of the cut and we're going to have the feed rate to be reduced accordingly. So that's the answer for the uh, case of the turning, which I consider is one of the more simplest uh, processes of the machining. The only equation you need to remember once again is going to be that the feed rate is equal to the rotational feed rate. Just remember this equation, though it's going to be given to you in the the exam multiplied by the RPM value. Uh, we have that the time of the machining is equal to the L divided by the feed rate. Okay, by the feed rate. And we have the speed of the cutting is equal to the I multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the RPM value. And finally, the rate of the material removal is equal to the V multiplied by the linear feed rate 
multiply by the depth of the current. Should be F R here. Okay, multiply by the depth of the current. These are the equations we are going to use. If you are going to have it in the assignment or the final exam, maybe I'm going to uh, make you rearrange the equation. For example, I can give you the length of the cut, I can give you the time of the machining, and you need to find the feed rate. Okay, so you are going to rearrange this equation to be that the feed rate uh, is going to be equal to uh, the L divided by the TM. Then you can use the feed rate value uh, to find the RPM value. Simply say that the uh, the RPM is equal to the feed rate divided by the FR divided by the feed rate, and you can find the RPM value. We can we can always do that by going backward and forward to change the equations and find the answers. Now, the example number two is going to be about the milling operation. And for the milling operation, is going to be a basic question in the assignment number three and the final exam. So you expect they are going to have such question in both uh, uh, tests. Now, another thing we need to think about is going to be uh, the cutting forces and the uh, yeah, the cutting forces that something we covered in the previous few weeks. We need always to practice on that and uh, be sure that again to give you a good revision uh, toward the final exam. Now, um, let's go further uh, for this question. We have a phase milling operation. It's performed on the top surface of a steel rectangular piece which has 300 millimeter long. By 65 millimeter wide. Okay, so if I can take a look on the top, it will look like that. 300 millimeter for the length and 65 millimeter for the width. So the cutting tool is going to start cutting from here. We did face milling. It's going to go all the way to remove a layer for the material. The milling cutters will follow the pad that's going to be centered above the workpiece. This is my tool pad. It has five teeth, so the end is equal to five. 75 millimeter diameter, then go the cutting tool. The cutting speed is 76 meter per minute dB. The feed rate Per teeth is 0.15 millimeter per tooth. Depth of the cut is 4 millimeter. Find the cutting time to make one pass across the surface. Second, the maximum metal remo removal rate, the MRM. Third, if additional approach distance of 12 millimeter is going to be provided at the beginning of the pass and over the travel distance is going to be provided at the end of the pass is equal to the cutoff radius plus 12 millimeter. What will be the duration of the feed rate motion is going to be? Now first we have to remember that the first L is going to be from here until the cutting tool center is going to be reaching that point. Remember that's going to be 300 plus the A value, the approach value. And we're going to calculate the approach value for the first case. Now, in the second scenario, we added 12 millimeter of both and 40 L. So the distance to be traveled is going to be longer. And thus, the length or the time of the cutting is going to be increased further. So, once again, this will be the case of the scenario we have. This is my cutting tool. This is the approach time we have. The approach distance we have. Again, to add it to the length of the work part and find the total length of the cutting. You can see that the cutting tool is wider than the work part, and that's why we use this approach equation. So, the solution first is going to be start and the finish positions of the milling phase is shown in this diagram. 
what we are going to have first is that the distance of the cutter has to travel is going to be equal to 300 plus the approach distance in order to machine the whole surface of the workpiece. Now it's easy because I have the equation for the A and I can find it. The A is equal to half of the diameter of the cutting tool minus under square root of the diameter square minus the width square. So substitute these values. The W is 65. Diameter is 75. So we're going to have 75 square minus 65 square under square root negative plus 75 divided by 2. This will be the A value. So we're going to get that the answer is going to be 18.8 millimeters. So the L in the first case is going to be 318.8 millimeter. Now we need to find the rotational feed rate, which is the feed per tooth multiplied by the number of the teeth per revolution. Now we got the number of the teeth per revolution is equal to five, the n is equal to five. And we have the feed per tooth is given to us as 0.15. Thus the rotational feed rate is going to be equal to 75 millimeter for each revolution. Now to calculate the spindle of this spindle speed or the RPM value is going to be equal to the speed divided by the pi multiplied by the diameter of the cutting tool. Now the speed of the cutting is given to us as 76 meter per minute. We change that to millimeter by multiplied by 1000. Then you divide by the pi multiplied by the diameter of the cutting tool, which is 76. So the RPM value for the cutting tool is going to be equal to 322 revolution per minute. Now the linear feed rate can be calculated by multiplying the rotational feed rate by the RPM value. So we're multiplying the 75 millimeter per revolution by the 322.6 revolution per minute. And the answer is going to be 242 millimeter per minute. So the, the feed rate that the cutting tool is going to be moving in this direction is going to be 400, uh, 242 uh, millimeter per minute. Okay, now we know the feed rate, we know the L. So now we, it's time to calculate the Tm, which is equal to the length divided by the feed rate. So we know both, we substitute, and we get to find that the time required to make one pass is going to be 1.32 minutes. Now we need to find the rate of the material removal. The rate of the material removal is going to be equal to the feed rate multiplied by the width multiplied by the depth of the cut. The depth of the cut is given to us as four millimeters. The width is given to us as um, uh, 65 millimeters and the feed rate was found to be for 242 millimeters per minute. So we substitute these values and we're going to get the answer to be 62.9 multiplied by 1000 or 62,900 millimeter cubic millimeter per minute. Now we are going to have an extra distance to be traveled by the cutting tool. The cutting tool is going to travel for 12 millimeter before making the contact with the work part. If it's going to move half diameter or 37.5 millimeter before its center is going to be aligned with the starting edge of the 300 millimeter workpiece. It's then going to feed along the length of the work part until the center of the distance x is equal to half of the under square root of the uh, d square minus uh, w square. And we're going to have the 18.7 millimeters from the end. Then the overall travel distance is going to consist of the cutter radius first plus the additional 12 millimeters 
and thus the time taken is going to be equal to the total distance and trouble divided by the feet rate we calculated earlier. So let's see what will be this distance to be traveled. First, it's going to travel for 12 millimeters. Start to have the contact with the work part, which is going to be equal to the radius of the cutting tool. Plus 300 minus the X value, which is 18.7. Plus the radius of the cutting tool, plus another 12 millimeters divided by the feed rate. And this will make the time to be 1.57 minutes, which is going to be higher than the previous one, which was 1.32 minutes. Okay, now uh, first check that before we're going to go further. I'm going to quickly in uh, all the final form slide. Okay, now the third example is going to be about drilling operation. You may not see um, a multiple drilling uh, operation. Well, I'll try to find a photo here and then show it to you. Multi So, um, yeah, this will be a good multi spindle. Okay, so this will be uh, an example for uh, the mission we're talking about. For example, you can see that we can make up four holes at the same time. And this one has two, two drilling tip. And this will be the example we're going to talk about. Now, actually, this operation is going to be something like. Uh, uh, for massive production. So you don't have to make the drilling of each hole individually as long as you can do a multiple holes at the same time as what you can see in these machines. Okay, so once again, this will be done on the drilling uh, press machine. It doesn't have to be done on the uh, CNC drilling machine. Once again, this will be the main reason for doing that is going to be the increase of the production rate. Now, in this example, we have the two spindle drill uh, machine. So, this is going to drill 12 millimeter hole and 20 millimeter hole through a workpiece that is 25 millimeter thickness. So, two different diameters for the holes, but both are going to be a through hole. That means it's going to go all the way down to 25 millimeter. Both the drills are going to be twisted drill with the point angle of 118. That the theta. If you remember, that the drill is going to have a theta in the middle here. This theta is equal to 118. Theta will help you to find the value for the approach distance A, which is going to be added to the uh, thickness of the part find the total length of the drilling. The cutting speed for the material is 17 meter per minute. Rotational speed of each spindle can be set individually. So we can find two different RPM value. The feed rate for both holes must be set at the same value because the two spindles will lower at the same time. Okay, so we know that the feed rate F is going to be the same. The feed rate is going to be set so the total metal removal rate does not exceed 25,000 cubic millimeter per minute. So we know the rate of the material removal. Bear in mind, first the maximum feed rate that can be used. Maximum feed rate can be used. The individual feed rate in millimeter per revolution that result for each hole. And finally, the time required to draw the holes. So once again, this will be the example. The feed rate is going to be the same, two different diameters for the cutting tool. Thus, we're going to have two different RPM for these tools. So the only thing coming between them is going to be that the feed rate is going to be the same and of course, the length of the cut also going to be shared. 
So we start first finding the total material removal rate, which is equal to the cross-sectional area of the two drills multiplied by the feed rate. So how to find the cross-sectional area of the two drills? We find the area of the first one plus the area of the second one. So the maximum RMR is going to be 25,000. This multiplied by the area one multiplied by the feed rate plus the area two multiplied by the feed rate. So the only thing we have in this equation as the unknown is going to be the feed rate value. So we substitute that, take the feed rate outside, rearrange this equation, and I can find the value of the feed rate is going to be equal to 25,000 divided by the 0.25 pi multiplied by the d1 square plus the d2 square. Okay, and thus I can find that the maximum feed rate in this case is going to be equal to 58 0.5 millimeter per minute. Now from here, I know the feed rate. I've been given here the velocity and speed. And thus I can find the RPM value. I know the diameter, I can find the RPM values. So the cutting speed is 70 meter per minute, which is 70,000 millimeter per minute spindle speed n is equal to the speed of the cutting divided by the pi d. Now we have two diameters, the same speed, we are going to have two different RPM values. So the first RPM value when the diameter is going to be equal to 12 millimeters. The second RPM value when the diameter is equal to 20 so the first RPM value is going to be equal to 1,857 revolution per minute. The second one is going to be 1,114 revolution per minute. Now, obviously, you can see that the uh, smaller diameter cutting tool is going to have a higher RPM value. Now, for the linear feed rate and the rotational feed rates are going to be related. So the linear feed rate is going to be equal to rotational feed rate multiplied by the RPM value. I'm going to rearrange this equation. I can find the value for the rotational feed rate. So for the D1 and the D2, the rotational feed rate for the diameter 1 of 12 millimeter diameter is going to be equal to the RPM Sorry, uh, the uh, linear feed rate, 58.5, divided by the RPM1. And that's why again to have 0 0.031 millimeter per revolution. For the diameter 2, we're going to have that the rotational feed rate is going to be equal to 0 0.053 millimeter per revolution. Now we need to calculate the time of the machining. So to do that, we need to find the value for the A, add it to the thickness of the work part, and thus we're going to find the distance. We know the linear feed rate, which is 58.5, and thus we can find the time required to do the drilling. So first start to find the allowance of each hole, which is going to be equal to the A, equal to the half of the diameter, multiplied by the tangent of 90 minus theta divided by 2. Theta is 118. So here we're going to have 90 minus 118 divided by 2. So for the diameter 1 and diameter 2, we can find that the A value for diameter 1 is going to be equal to 3.61 millimeters. The A for the diameter 2 is equal to 6.01 millimeters. Taking the maximum allowance, which is 6.01, because this will be the longest distance that the uh, device is going to be passed. Total machining time is going to be calculated by dividing the total distance traveled by the linear feed rate by the, as the following. So we have the thickness of the part plus the maximum A we have divided by the linear feed rate, and this will make it 25 plus 6 divided by 58.5, and this will be equal to 0.53 minutes, or what equal to 31.8 seconds. So we just multiply that by 60. 
Now, well, before we get into that, I hope that uh, everything here is clear. And while we use the uh, the longest the longest a value, because uh, that's what actually going to be happen. Uh, now, even if the first one is going to be drilled, the second one still have to pass. So, of course, the time is going to be calculated based on the longest system, not the shortest system. Now, another example of the milling operation. I think we have uh, two more questions. So, the first one is we have a slab milling operation performed on the top surface of the steel rectangular work piece, which have three millimeter long by 65 millimeter wide. So, something similar to the previous one. We have a helical milling cutter has 75 millimeter and 10 teeth. So now the N is equal to 10. It's set up to be overhang the width of the part on both sides. Now the cutting tool is wider than the work part. It is going to set to overhang over the width of the uh, part on both sides. The cutting speed is given at 38 meter per minute. The feed rate per tooth is 0.15 millimeter per tooth. Depth of the cut is set to be 7.5 millimeters. Do in mind first the actual machining time to take one pass across the surface. Okay, second. Now just remember this is slab milling. That means my cutting tool is rotating that way. This will be the work part. Okay. The cutting tool is rotating around this center. So it's not going to be the face milling like what we had earlier. Uh, the actual machining time to take one pass across the surface, the maximum metal removal rate during the cut. And once again, if I get to have additional approach distance or 12 millimeters is going to be provided at the beginning of the pass. And over the travel distance is going to be provided at the end of the pass equal to the cutter radius plus 12 millimeters what will be duration of the feed motion we're going to have so uh, once again later we're going to add 12 millimeter at the beginning and we're going to add 12 millimeter plus the radius of the cutting tool plus the L we're going to have earlier and of course the A value we have Okay, so all these things are going to be added in the second stage, something like what we had in the previous example. Now, this is a peripheral cutting. Cutting tool, or what we call the horizontal milling, is going to look like that. The cutting tool has 75 millimeter diameter, overhang from the part on both sides, that will be cut 7.5. This will be the feed rate direction. This will be the speed motion. So that's what will happen. This will be the A value. And this will be the length of the work part. And we need to add that in the first case. And because the part, the cutting tool is going to move from this center to that center before it's going to finish the cutting operation. So this will be traveling distance required to find the time of the machining. So from the parameters, we can calculate many things, including the uh, linear feed rate and rotational feed rate and the RPM value. So the same as applying the example number two, the same equation are going to be used at the RPM is equal to the speed of the cutting divided by the pi multiplied by the diameter. The speed of the cutting given to us at 38 meter per minute and we have the diameter as 75 millimeters which is equal to 0.075 meters. Thus, the RPM value is going to be equal to 161.3 revolution per minute. Now, I know the value of the N. Uh, I know the value for the linear feed rate. Thus, I'm going to be able to calculate the value for the linear feed rate. It's going to be equal to the RPM multiplied by the NT multiplied by the feed rate. And thus, I'm going to substitute this value. The RPM has been found. The NT is equal to... 0.15 and uh, the feed rate is given so the n is equal to 10 and thus I'm going to find that the feed rate is going to be equal to 400, 242 millimeter per minute 
now the time of the machining is going to be a factor of the total distance passed divided by the feed rate. The total distance pass is going to be length of the work part plus the approach value A. So the approach value is going to be equal to under square root of the uh, D, depth of the cut, multiplied by the diameter minus the depth of the cut. And this will be equal to 22.5 millimeters. So here we're going to have 300 plus 22.5 divided by the 242. And the time of the machine in that case is going to be equal to 1.33 minutes. Now the rate of the material removal. Now we know the feed rate. We know the depth of the cut. And we know the width. So the same equation is going to be added. The width, which is 65, multiplied by the depth of the cut, which is 7.5. And the feed rate, which is 242 millimeters per minute. So we substitute these values and we're going to find that the merit of the material removal is uh, this actually 10 up to power 3, 118,000 cubic millimeter per minute. Now the other scenario is we're going to add 12 millimeter before making the contact and we're going to have the uh, 12 millimeter after plus the Base of the cutting tool, and this will be the total distance I again to have. So, once again, the L plus A is given as 322.5 from the previous uh, uh, calculation we had. Okay, and we're again to add 12 millimeter, and we're again to add 37.5 and 12 millimeters. So, the total distance is going to be traveled is equal to 12 plus the distance traveled area plus the width of the cutting tool plus 12 millimeters divided by the feed rate and this will be equal to 1.59 minutes as the total time passed by the cutting tool to make one trouble for again to add 12 millimeters at the, before the contact and 12 millimeters plus the radius of the cutting tool after it's going to be the work part. Now that example was a question in the final exam. And I think it's going to be repeated as a question in the assignment. So let me check that for the turning operation. Okay, what is the millimeter long government control? Uh, yep, so the same question is going to repeat to you as the question in the uh, assignment. So now we did the milling and we did the turning. Later again to make a short session for you to cover the cutting temperature and the tool line. So we start with, uh, we did this one now actually everything is easy for the milling operation if I can to check it with this one. We're doing the uh, face milling so it's going to be equal to the question number, uh, example number two. Uh, we know the length, we know the width, uh, the miller cutters are going to have the five teeth. The cutting speed is giving, the feed rate is giving, and the depth of the cut is giving. Find the actual cutting time, the maximum method of more rate, additional distance is going to be added. So actually it's going to be exactly similar to the example we had before the cutting and after the cutting, try to find the time. In turning operation, we have a table shape. So it's going to be similar to the question, the, uh, the, the example we're doing right now. Now take a look to this example. We have a table shape. That means it's going to have two diameters. I get to start the cutting form here and moving all the way to here to clean the material with the depth of cut given. Table sur uh, service is to be turned in the automatic lane. The workpiece is 750 millimeter long with minimum and maximum diameters of 100 millimeter and 200 millimeters at opposite end. So obviously the, this one is going to be 200 and that one is going to be 100. Uh, the automatic control on the lathe will permit the surface speed to be maintained at a constant value of 200 
millimeter per minute. By adjusting the rotational speed as a function of the workpiece diameter. So what we are going to have is that the once again uh, the surface speed is going to maintain the same. Okay, but the rotational speed actually is going to be changed, the RPM value, because it's going to be a function of the diameter. The feed rate given to us is 0.25 millimeter per revolution. Depth of the cut is going to be 3 millimeters. Now, the rough geometry of the piece has already been formed, and this operation will be the final cut. There are my first time required to turn the table shape. Second, the rotation speed at the beginning and the end of the cut. So we need to find the RPM here and the RPM here. The same trouble is going to be that the rate of the material removal is that required. I'm not sure about that, but we will see about that. Now the area of the uh, frostrum uh, of the cone uh, or the truncated cone uh, is going to be uh, used. So we start with the solution. I'm sorry for that. I don't like it to be like that. Sorry, I'm going to fix this one before we're going to move further. Okay, so we start the form here. Sorry, just give me one second. Okay, so we'll start now with the solution. So um, the first thing we are going to do is uh, the surface speed has the same meaning uh, as the cutting speed, which is going to be tangential speed of the job, or the V, of course. As for the turning operation, the material removal rate is going to be given by the equation, the speed of the cutting, multiplied by the TO, which is the depth of the cut multiplied by the t but the to is equal to the f in that case but the f is rotational feed rate in millimeter per revolution so we can simply apply these parameters the speed of the cutting is 200,000 millimeter per minute the feed rate given to us as 0.25 millimeter per revolution and depth of the cut is equal to 3 millimeters and thus, the rate of the material removal is going to be equal to 150,000 cubic millimeter per minute. Now, uh, normally, what we are going to have in the turning operation, that the time taken to machine the length is going to be equal to the distance passed divided by the speed. Distance is going to be the edge value divided by the speed, which is going to be the F multiplied by the N which is the, the linear feed rate, okay, linear feed rate. Now we need to find the edge value to find the other parameters. In this case, the n is going to keep changing because we said we are going to have different diameters. Since the cutting speed has to be kept constant, while the diameter of the piece is going to be changing. Therefore, we have to work out the time taken by the TM to by the remind the total volume removed and then divided this volume by the rate at which the volume is going to be removed. So the time of the machine in the table shape is going to be total volume has been removed. This will be cubic millimeter divided by the material removal rate in cubic millimeter per minute. And thus we are going to substitute uh, so I simplify the millimeters to get the time to be a minute. So we already calculated the rate of the material removal. Now we all need to find what will be the total volume removed. Total volume removed is going to be equal to the surface area of the table shape multiplied by the thickness or the depth of the cut. The area is given by this equation. Depth of the cut is given as 3 millimeters. So we can find the total volume directly. 
So it's going to be equal to 1,062,641 cubic millimeters. So the time of the machining in that case is going to be equal to the rate of the volume removed by the rate of the material removed. And this will be 7 minutes and 0.084 minutes. Now we can have the constant cutting speed. We know the two different diameters, and then we can find the two different RPM value. Now you remember that the n is equal to the v divided by the pi d. V divided by the pi d. Okay, so we can simply we know the value of the v, the diameters, and the pi. We can find the value for the n. So we write down the equation. Substitute the two diameters, and then we are going to find the two RPM values. Now, obviously, you can see that at the larger diameter, the RPM value will be reduced because, once again, the arm of the force is going to be higher, and this will add higher torque on the cutting tool. Now, we found the RPM value. Now, the other thing we need to find out here, we found everything. That's it for uh, this tutorial. And we are going to, actually, now we, we had um, the answers, steps for the question number one and question number two. So I see actually no reason for you for not doing that. So I, I hope that you are going to work over the weekend to do these two questions and thus put aside and we're going to do the other two questions next week and later we're only going to have three questions remain uh, for this assignment thank you for your listening and hope to see you soon